video. But I do hope that one of these days, if you are able to come over to Cebu, you can visit UP Cebu TLRC as well as the university campus itself. It's a it's one of the oldest campus of the University of the Philippine system, but it's also one of the youngest constituent units. Okay. Now, talking more about this collaboration, we know that UP Cebu TLRC has been doing a lot of educational webinars from the past, starting 2020. And then right up until now, we are still doing it as part of our function, as well as vision to be part of your learning every day, every week, and every month. Okay, while well, Makisining, Makisining, the Makiling Art Group, is a collective of professional and amateur visual artists, student artists, and art connoisseurs based and practicing their arts in one of the six municipalities and cities in the foothills of Mount Makiling. Uh, namely, this is Alaminos Bay, Calamba City, Calawan, Los Banos, Santo Tomas. And this particular group, the Makiling Art Group Makisining, is a conglomeration of artists and prominent members of art organizations and institutions and was founded in 2011 with a purpose of strengthening camaraderie between visual artists in the said localities. But right now, Makisining is opening its doors to the wider public and that's the reason why we have now the collaboration with Makisining as part of their endeavor to encourage everyone to be part of this visual movement, which is to be more aware and be more participative in the art movements here and about the Philippines. Okay, so before we have our talk with our current speaker today, let me have Miss Hazel de la Pena for our webinar reminders. Miss Hazel, the floor is yours. Okay, let me share. Hello everyone, good afternoon. Hello? Madam? Yes, Miss Hazel, go on. Ah, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. So let me read to you about uh, the webinar reminders. This webinar will be recorded. We will be keeping tab of the proceedings for this webinar for documentation purposes. You are free to leave if you feel uncomfortable that the this session will be recorded. Mute your microphone during the talk. We want to make sure that the speaker's voice is clear to everyone. We may hope to remove you if you don't follow this request. And refrain from taking pictures or videos of the talk. If you do so, you will be held accountable of data privacy violations if the copy you created leaks into other internet outlets. We wish to keep the identity of our participants private, so as yours as well. And avoid using the annotation tool. Once the annotation tool is activated, you might unconsciously swerve your, your arrow towards the speaker's presentation and draw unnecessary lines that may block the participant's view on some text and images in the slides. This may also cause distraction to the participants and to the speaker. If you have questions while the talk is ongoing, you may put them in the Q&A box. And after the talk, you will have a chance to ask your questions. We wish for you to only use the Q&A box rather than voice because of our time constraint. And of course, don't forget to evaluate. Your inputs and the webinar will help us improve our next webinars. Please do not forget to evaluate. After you have answered the forms, you will be given a proof of participation. Evaluation link will be open right after the webinar and shall remain open for only 10 minutes. Okay, so uh, our webinar is currently live streaming on our YouTube channel, TLRC UP Cebu. For those watching through YouTube, you will get your proof of participation by staying until the end of the session. We'll be announcing the instructions at the live chat, so please stay tuned. Our socials for more webinar and training updates, follow and contact us on these platforms. Our FB page is the Teaching and Learning Resource Center, University of the Philippines, Cebu. And our YouTube channel is the LRC UP Cebu and our website, lrc.upcebu.edu.ph or email us at lrc.upcebu at up.edu.ph. Okay, so that's all. 
Okay, thank you so much, Miss Hazel. So before we move forward, can I ask our participants to uh, let us know where they came from? So I'm currently here at Los Banos Laguna, and it's quite sunny over here and very windy as well. I don't know about Manila or the other um, parts of Luzon right now, but it's been a good weather so far. Okay, so we know that the UP Cebu TLRC comes from Cebu, the very nice island of Cebu. I hope you can visit us from Cebu as well. <laughs> okay, I do hope the others. Oh, we have from Baguio City. Okay. So you can put there your locations. We have from Caloocan, Southern Leyte. Hi po, and from Davao. I miss Davao. <laughs> I wish I can still go to Davao. Thank you. Cavite. Hi po, Jan, at Cavite. Laguna. <laughs> yes, sir, Nan. Durian at Davao is the best. Like, chef's kiss. Okay. So, we have Santa Rosa and Batangas. Okay. Parang marami po tayo sa Kaloocan ngayon. Yung isang uh, boardmate ko dito, taga Kaloocan. Yan. Hi po, from PUP Manila. Thank you for joining us. Okay, and also a shout out to our ever supportive HR team. Okay, and former coordinator is Katia. Hello, Miss Natty. Hello, is that you're here? Okay, Miss Natty and Miss J is here with us. Okay, we are very supported by a lot of our UP Cebu constituents as well. Thank you so much. Now, for the introduction of speaker, uh, we would like to call on Mr. Fernand Bernardes, our TLRC coordinator. The floor is yours, sir. Okay, so can I be heard? We're good? Yes. Okay. okay. By the way, good day po sa lahat. By the way po, it is me. I'm Sir Nan. I'm Fernand Bernardes. And it's my task for today to introduce um, our speaker. This is actually Sir Paul Hilario. He is a visual artist from Los Banos, Laguna, and he graduated from, of course, from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, with a degree in Bachelor of Science in Biology, majoring in Microbiology, and was once the curator of the IRRI, or RISE World Museum, before becoming a full-time artist. Sir Paul's art, um, art focuses on creating visual narratives with themes ranging from blissful to brooding, reach in common and personal symbolism, and his works often delves with um, into social um, commentaries on political, social, environmental, religious, cultural, and agricultural matters. With four solo um, exhibitions, um, at inhibitions, and sorry, uh, numerous group shows, including Singapore and Italy. His work has um, garnered international recognition. He has received two um, exhibition grants from NCEA and was a finalist in the 2023 High Art Gallery International Art Competition. I know that we're all excited to meet our, um, our esteemed um, speaker for today's event. Please help me welcome Mr. Paul Hilario. Afternoon po. Hello, good afternoon everybody. Good afternoon po. Uh, narinig naman ako? Yes po. Okay, so simulan na natin. Share ko lang yung screen. Okay. Uh, salamat sa lahat ng mga ano, nag-register for the for this webinar, yung topic ko for this afternoon, pinili ko yung love, politics, and the color wheel. Precisely because it's it's February, it's love month. And looking back, dun sa mga trabaho na ginagawa ko, I use yung love as a, as a theme. Very, very common. Makikita nyo mamaya. And yung politics also is a common theme or subject that I do. And you, of course, I have to relate it to art and how I, how I use colors, para uh, I can make this artworks. Okay, 
this uh, webinar will be especially good if you're a beginner artist or if you're into design, uh, fashion, interior, graphic design. I think it will help you. Or if you are a, a art enthusiast, you, this will be a different aspect on how you look at paintings and how artists use colors to convey their messages. Okay? So, back, uh, nag-mention na kanina a little bit about my background. So, but this is something else, okay? As early as four years old, I was already a muralist. You know how that goes. I think some of you are also muralists when you're very young. So, I used to draw on our walls <laughs> to the consternation of my mother and to the and my father was actually glad actually pero kasali siya sa naglilinis ng dingding <laughs> when I when I do that okay and I drew everything I saw when I was younger there was no google there was no search engine for images so everything was just based on memory so of course as children we do that and then my when I started school, my notebooks were all filled with sketches. Your notebooks, barring lessons, starts from the front to back. Tapos yung sketches starts from back to front. And they meet, okay? When they meet, yung sketches will overlap na the lessons. Yung sides lang naman, okay? And in sixth grade, I was actually inspired by Marvel and DC Comics to make, and I did make my own comics. So yung background co was into comics that's how i started i did apply for the philippine high school for the arts but i failed sobrang galing ng mga kasabayan ko at that time and drawing just became a hobby so what happened to me as mentioned i graduated to science I, I like science too so i took up biology and microbiology in uplb then these are the works that uh i took after you can ask where is the art in that diba it's all actually it's art of selling sales but 2003 i had the opportunity to be uh, hired by the iri international rice research institute and became the curator of a rice museum so here i have i share you two pictures and this is the year that i started making art more seriously this is the year that Arroyo, 2011, was the year that Arroyo was ar arrested and the U.S. Uh, assassinated bin Laden. So a little bit political, okay? It was a tumultuous year when I started. Of course, early inspirations was rice. I, hindi ako makakatax doon because obviously my, one of my grandfather was a rice farmer. I used to send us... Uh, uh, Spent my summers in near a rice field, and my other grandfather was an artist, so mother side, and I worked at Kiri for thirteen years. So you can imagine, I I I talk with farmers, rice farmers specifically, rice scientists and researchers on a daily basis. And even my windows, ang kwan ko dun ang scenery is a rice field. So I'm sharing to you one picture, one early work it's made in 2011. I purposely removed the colors because I will be explaining later how I use colors in making that. Uh, painting. Okay, so, as I mentioned, another favorite theme is love. But this one is very early work. 2011, you will see a little later some drastic changes on what will happen to my art. This is, I'll explain later the painting, okay? Plus, and I, I was able to incorporate love plus rice. You can see there's a rice element in that painting. But there's also a love element in that painting. In fact, in 2011, I had a two-man show at a, a big mall here in Laguna. And the title of the show was Kapag Palay Na Lumapit Sa Manok, which is an expression uh, when it's the rice that approaches the chicken. It's, uh, it's an expression that when the woman is, make advances to a man, okay? And this is the title painting of the uh, exhibit. It's about four, four feet by four feet. And I'll, again, tinanggal ko muna yung color so you can appreciate it better when I explain it. Now, how to use colors? 
when we were younger, this picture was shown to us in elementary, the color wheel, and we were tasked to memorize it. But in school, I was not taught how to use them. I only memorized all those colors and how the complementary colors and all the other uh, compositions, but it, it was never taught to us. I don't know now if they teach that in school. So I, I needed to find a way so I could understand color so I can use them properly. So I became a student of color. Okay. So this is one of the early books that I read. There aren't many books on color. And this one was made by Munsell, printed in 1919. It's a very old book. It's hard to read book, very boring. But I, I needed to read on it, especially that Munsell has a paint company. With say with colors, it's it's a light frequency, but with when you paint, we're talking about pigments, so it's a different thing. So over here, uh, I got a lot of insights. For example, green. When we talk about green, what kind of green are we talking about? Are we talking about avocado green, lime green, or mint green? And there are a whole lot of other greens out there, but it's never specific. And we get the names of colors from natural objects, things that we see, aqua blue, sea green, and, and all, uh, rose red, diba. It's always associated to nature. But the colors are highly variable. It's never the same. You green any isip ko might be the green. It's a different green that you're thinking of. So we cannot articulate it in a way. It it's always has to be visual. So if we want to be very specific about colors, we talk about Pantone, di ba? Very specific. Kunyari, yung green is 00843. RGB, yung first line, is red, green, blue combination. See, there's no red in green. So this is the purest green. I mostly use CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and K. K is key or black. Okay, So that's uh, uh, how you can specify colors very specifically. In music and the visual arts, there's a similarity, okay? Although in music, you can pinpoint the note. You can say, I know, G flat, diba? Uh, C sharp. But in visual arts, it's different with colors. But they do, sh visual arts borrowed a lot of the terminologies from music, okay? So impressionism, expressionism, these are just some of the samples. Rhythm, balance. And I'm this afternoon, I will be talking more about harmony, okay? So color harmony, let's start first with the ECS, complementary colors. Complementary colors are the colors that are opposite the, the, uh, the color wheel. For example, the most common ones are yellow, violet, orange, blue, and red, green, and so forth and so on. Okay, But again, how do you use these colors in making artworks? Here are examples. Uh, before I go into that, First, I'd like to explain this a little bit further. They are called complementary colors because they complement each other. They help each other out. For example, red and green, when they you put them together, the color becomes more vibrant. What if you do this? The color seems to vibrate because this is a combination, an alternate of low, high, and low, high frequencies, wavelength of light. So, pag tinignan mo itong matagal, parang sumasakit na yung mata mo, di ba? It's the same with uh, blue and orange, the same for violet and yellow, and the worst, actually, yung pinaka-extreme is actually red and, and blue because these are the uh, polar opposites of the wavelength of light for colors. So, medyo masakit yan pag tinitigan mo. Okay? So, sometimes, Siguro, you shouldn't be wearing these clothes unless you want to be uh, uh, noticed, highly noticed, okay? Again, how do you use color? This is an early work, 2011. I call it complementary co coffee. And this is how I use this example. I use red and green as my focal point. And then I added detail, uh, red and green also inside the cup. The cup is red and the table is green. So this way, you're not going to look at the, the Boko Pai with the in Boko Pai Alamod, but 
you're gonna focus your eye on the red and green cup and table. But I added also, see, there's also a red and green on the spoon and also for the fork, it's also a red and green. Okay. For, for blue and orange, here's a blue mug over uh, a, an orange table. And I also added details of orange and blue in the in the mug. But I didn't stop there. See over here, you can see that there is a red and green combo. And even the fire hydrant is red and green. And even back there at the background, you see a combination of yellow and violet. The last one is violet mug over a yellow table. And for good measure, I added red and green as detail. And you see there's a spoon also there with on the shadow that's orange already. And there's also a saucer with red and green colors. And at the back, a sofa and a blue floor. Now, I'm showing you, you this, but it's actually an overkill in my opinion. I was still learning. This is very abusive. I used all colors talaga. I, I put all the vibrant colors together because I was still learning at this point. But these color combinations you can use if you want the painting to be very jubilant, very happy. Diba? And as you go on, you see that it's probably not best to use this color combination if you're going to do more serious stuff. Okay, I'll show you later. Okay. So this is the, an example of early work, also 2011. My focal point is the boy. There's a love component here in this painting. The boy wearing the yellow shirt with the violet, uh, uh, I mean, yellow trim with violet shirt. Then up in the tree, you can see orange and, green, uh, orange and blue. Again, orange and blue on the roots. And for the lady, for the girl, green background, red dress. And up in the trees, it's a red, red green combo. And in the roots, it's also a red green combo. Okay. This is a this is a picture that I showed earlier. The title is Bugao. Okay. See, the birds are violet over a very yellow background. So that's the focal point. And then if you see the little boy, blue shirt, orange shorts, green shirt, red shorts. And up, up, up in the trees, there are combinations of red and green and blue and orange. And also down on the, on the ground, there's also a red and green combination. These are fire trees. There are many fire trees at Erie where I used to work. So that became my inspiration. But aside from the love, in your love component here is about love for nature. If you notice the little boy here, it's very small. He has a slingshot. But instead of you know, shooting the birds, they just, kaya nga bugaw eh. Binugaw lang nila yung ibon. Because that's also how Erie operates. You're not supposed to hurt any animals in the in the rice field. Okay. Here is another one. Also the same, the same picture I showed, but with color. Focal point, red and green. And then at the back, you have blue and orange there. And we can also add, there's a violet and yellow component there. Now, the title, uh, Amoy Pinipig, it's also an expression. Maybe in the cinemas, it was, it was used. So it's more of a... Uh, romantic uh, love we're talking about here and you can get it from the expression and the uh, and the people there okay here is the title piece kapag pala na lumapit sa manok again red and blue and the tail of the chicken of the rooster is blue against an orange background and even in the background i added red and green combo combination and even for the baskets there's an orange and blue combination now, if you look at the painting, it means kapag palay na lumapit sa manok. So this rooster is taking advantage of the lady passing by holding a basket of rice. But actually, the story is about this. 
look at the eyes of the lady. And over here, there's a hat and a sickle. So it's similar. It's the same. It's a double meaning. The girl is coming towards the man. So that's the expression. Okay. Oh, kanina puro comic style kasi yung figures. But I, I also do landscapes. And this way, a uh, red bridge over a mo predominantly green background. Now, wh what's the love component here? What's the love? Harry actually is a Japanese lady who died. And his and her husband created a garden for her called Kali's Garden. And this is the bridge in Kali's Garden. So this is a, a tribute garden for her. For her, his wife, Kari. Okay. Now, some of you might be familiar with this one. I be, I made it in 2013. And if you can view the, the colors uh, closely, you will see that there will be a lot of violets near the yellows. Okay. There's are lots of uh, oranges near the blues here. And even in the sun, in the in the sky you have blue and yellows and especially here in the nightscape you will see uh blue orange combo even here in the man the, the focal point blue orange and this painting was became viral in 2021 i don't know if you remember it was the pan, uh, uh pandemic at that time and but this is another story to tell really i cannot go into it in detail maybe next time okay Okay. In 2012, something happened. Uh, I I got a mentor to help me with art making. His name is Marcel Antonio, one of the most popular artists in the Philippines today. And he showed me this. Maybe most of the participants in this webinar are young, but before there were no printers that you see in your in your houses. It was just purely mostly black printers. But for color, it was overlay. Old printing process, you have a... First, the printer will print the cyan color, then overlay that with magenta ink, then overlay that with yellow, then black ink. So you get the final color, like this uh, picture of a dog is showing. All the colors are there because all the colors are actually a combination of, of C, uh, C, M, Y, and then black and white. Okay? So this, this is what I did. That is for printing, but this is painting. It's a, a little bit more technical. This is my key. It's not black. It's a combination of uh, yellow ochre and black. Then I highlighted areas where I think the light will hit into white and then covered that with a transparent wash of magenta. And then again, another white layer for the highlights where the light will hit. Very selective. And then for my yellow... Uh, I did another wash of yellow. These are transparent washes, not opaque washes. And then white again. And then blue. So I've covered all, same YK. And for the final colors, here's what the painting looks like. It's very different from my previous paintings. And in this way, I didn't do any blending at all. It was just colors over other colors. And if you notice, the shadows are very rich, especially if you look at the the skirt of the lady, the the skirt has red, oranges, yellows, violets, blues, greens in there. If you can see the painting up close. So that's what happened. So this is another set. This is a quite recent, 2023. So mostly blue and orange combination. And there's the love component. This is romantic love. And these are the same characters actually. Now the family, this is familial love and this is generation generation general eh, basta. <laughs> oh, love through the generations okay so upon anilayan okay and some of you this might be familiar they were featured by Rebisco uh it was released early this year I think January they released the cans early which is January okay now move on to another color Harmony combination, triads. The triads are different. It gets more technical. Triads are three colors, and they're separated by three other colors in the color wheel. These are examples of the common ones. Okay. So I'll try to use that. Okay. 
This was also painted in 2013 in perquisition of, of pleasure. This is, uh, you see the orange, violet, and the green. But of course, I also use other colors to, to complement the other colors that I used over here. And let's try to dissect the painting a little bit. The painting is really all about, in the title is in, per, in Pursuit of Happiness. So how do you become happy? The Cupid is a symbol of love. That's pretty obvious. The clown is a symbol of laughter, comedy. And you can see that he's also looking at himself. So you laugh at yourself. Okay. Some people love their career and work. They find happiness there. And some people love to travel. If you can see, the shoe has a hole in it. So it means he has traveled a lot. And there's a top here for play. Okay. It can be sports, any kind of play. And generosity. You see he's holding some food because there's a koi pond here. And the koi has a lot of uh, meanings. It symbolizes many things. It could be success and longevity. And for the monk, of course, it's a good symbol for peace and enlighten enlightenment. And for the purple, uh, purple lotus flower, it's actually wealth. And the tree with a lot of roots, that's family. And this one is a little, little bit harder to understand. Contentment. You see the wood that he's carrying, the monk is carrying, is bowed. It's bent, like it's very heavy. But if you look inside the pail, there's nothing in it. So that's contentment. That's how I visualize contentment in this piece. But this is very important. The stones on top of each other symbolizes balance. Okay. Now we're getting political. Okay. This was painted again in 2013, and I used red, blue, yellow. Very nationalistic colors because, of course, it's the color of our flag. Again, let's try to dissect it. This is the Ang Matuid, the red carpet. And the lady with the sun behind her is a symbolism of power. And this is the old leader, uh, venerating power and money. And this is the new leader. Okay. And along the way, there are apples, you see, along the straight path. And it's a red-green combination, complementary. And along that, where the apple falls, there's the Ang Baluktot. And if you remember back in uh, in those in those years, uh, pork barrel that was the issue back then. So there's a magician pulling out the head of a pig. They're doing uh, magic in the pork barrel, okay? And there's a lady washing clothes. The clothes are color green, money, and it's, it has also gold lace. But you cannot see in this more picture. And it, it, this. This is a little bit funny. I use Naples yellow for the scarf, the scarf. So it's very similar to Napoles. And the lady has a hair lip. So NGO, that's how they use money uh, They use the NGOs to money laundering. So it's just a fun play of the NGO, NGO. So Momo here has a hair lip. And up there on top, you have the, oops, the angry citizens. Okay. Here is another example of a triad, Salalim ng Gabi. So we use the term, if you translate that, it will be in the depth of the night. But the night doesn't have any depth. What does? The seas, the oceans. Yeah. So I, I imagine the female protagonist swimming. And there's here's the here's a male uh, counterpart, and you can also see some uh, there's a male sleeping there, and there are other characters in the in the picture. But this painting actually, aside from the sort of uh, love story telling, it's actually about people who work at night, the BPO industry, call center workers, but. Look, this guy is, we can say, natutulog siya sa araw. And this lady, all their uh, eyes are closed. Uh, this lady, you can see at the corner, her hands are tied. 
and there's a watch there so her hands are tied to her work hours and this lady naman is carrying coffee to keep them awake and if you notice there's two windows at the bottom there's a dark portion where the light is on so that's night night time but you're working and during daytime you're asleep so i just wanted to do you know just some visual interpretation of how the bpo workers uh lives you know uh revolve okay and even the sun is a combination of the moon okay. analogous it's, this is a different combination it's very easy actually because you only use three colors and these are all adjacent each other in the color wheel okay so an example Julian and Jacob is quite recent 2023 Right now, it might not be familiar to you, but actually these two characters, you grew up with them. This is actually how I envisioned Jack and Jill when they grew up. You remember the there's nursery land, Jack and Jill went up the hill. That's the hill. And there's uh, there's the well. It's an old well. They've grown up. And there's the pail with the spilled water. But Jack had other, you know, other things to do, like climb the beanstalk. And there's also a nursery rhyme that Jack... Uh, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, jump, jump over the candlestick. And Jill, she became uh, an acrobat, a gymnast. She, she, she's wearing a sort of a gymnast costume over here. And the, the real question is, the story revolves is, does Jack still love Jill? Does Jill still love Jack? So it's, uh, it's more up to the viewer to see. But the answer is there for my, you know, my personal interpretation is there. It's more about waiting for love or if people are willing to wait for you, if you make them wait, okay? And I added, see at the background, you can see green, red combination, okay? Here's another analogous. I, again, I, I told you I was a salesman before. So this is an expression of uh, what I learned during my days as a salesman. But there again, there I always use the love component. For example, if you see the man, he has a yellow flower, one yellow flower on his pocket, and the lady has two yellow flowers, holding two yellow flowers. Now, why is that? Meron kasi dati daw, ano, style, mapaliligaw, that when you send uh, flowers, you send only two, and then we come and visit the lady, the girl, you bring the last one to make it three. Okay? And here, I in this painting, I use mostly the blue colors, and it's different values and with green okay and of course i also use the blue orange combination to accentuate the painting but not too much here's another one that has a love theme to it i use the yellow orange and green combination now flowers have symbolisms and this is this work is a uh, is symbolic about uh, love and deception, actually. Okay. Maybe I won't discuss how, unless you want to ask me later. <laughs> okay. Next, here's a romantic cliche again, using analogous color composition, color, color harmony, and I entitled it "Romantic Cliche" because it's it's a cliche. It's a story of you know if you watch TV shows, movies. Uh, the rich girl is not interested in in marrying someone else rich, but to a poor guy. And there, if you can connect all the the elements in in the painting, you know what's happening. You see, she's about to step off a a tightrope. That's she's living a tightrope, and this is the man holding the wedding ring where she is supposed to get married to. And the parents, here are the parents, the castle is crumbling. So they're losing wealth. But, and this is, if you notice, there's a symbolism. Both the doll and the lady on the tightrope has the same color scheme on their clothes. So this doll signifies her when she was little. So you have to follow everything we say. But up there in the clouds, you see th uh, five kites, but two kites actually are free. They have no string. So maybe it's a symbol of elopement or of, of finding their freedom. Okay. 
This one is a love triangle, Sabungera. And I use this color combination alongside with other color combination, but only in the backgrounds, like for orange, blue, and red and green. And this is story is about a dominant female in a love triangle relationship. And if you see, she has a wedding ring, and then the guy in orange has a wedding ring. But she he is under the girl Saya, under the Saya. She's the one, he's the one who cooks the meals. And this guy, the guy in green, has uh, there's something in, in his hand. Okay. So it depends on how you would like to interpret the painting. Actually, there are varied ways on how you can interpret a painting. This is just, I'm just sharing you my personal ones. Maybe almost finished. Uh, analogous combination. Okay. The Jester Queen and Jester King. The colors here are more into the violet uh, side. Over here, Jester Queen, the man, it's just really a combination of red and green. The Jester King, Jester Queen is a it's a representation for me of uh, yung lalaking manluloko at yung babaeng manluloko. So it's a pair. For That's why I painted this together. But I paired, painted them in separate years. Okay? Monochromatic this is very easy. Just pick one color. But I'm not heavily into monochromatic. Even if the, even in this painting, uh, I include the other colors. I find it hard to not use other colors because... It's a preference for artists. Okay. This this one is entitled Overlook Over Sea. So if you see the sailor is looking into, into the horizon. And yet, and look at his posture, his legs, it's like he's running away. Right? But he's trying to look for, for love elsewhere. But here's the lady holding a sort of a white scarf, white flag of surrender. So you don't don't have to look. Uh, too far for love. That's what I'm trying to say here. They might be there around you. Okay, you're just not receptive to the signals. Okay. So in this webinar, I've, we talk about complementary, how to use complementary, triadic, analogous, and monochromatic. Uh, I won't have time to discuss the others. It's a bit more complicated, but we've. I, we've talked about color harmony, some, okay? There's also color temperature. We won't have time for, probably for color temperature, so I won't discuss that anymore. There's also color values, okay? And then there's also color psychology. A color psychology is, is different. It's when you talk about love, what's the first color you think of? It's it's red. When you think about nature, it's green, right? When you in in and we, we talk about femininity, what do you think? Pink, diba? Right? There's a reference to the colors, and you can use that to your advantage also if you're going to use paintings. Going to make paintings. Yep, sorry. Okay. So let's dive into a little bit more political. Once you're familiar with all the color combinations and all those other stuff that you need in color combination you can other use now use it in a way that's different more serious how it looks like for example this one was painted in 2021 kinhawa sa gitna ng pandemya it's the title of the piece okay let's dissect it a bit so this is the leader with the iron hand okay and this is the class pyramid it's red uh it's red yellow and green like the traffic light green because that's the top of the pyramid go this is during the pandemic, remember. So if you notice the the guy sleeping guy in the middle, there is a the tip of the class pyramid over there, and there's money flowing into there. Very comfortable because during the pandemic, of course, the rich people were not exactly that comfortable, but they're a lot more comfortable than the people in the middle class and in the masses. Okay, so the masses there, you can see the lower part of the pyramid loss of jobs, and the ayuda, which was not enough, of course. And then the prices of uh, food products were soaring at that time. Economic collapse, not just in the Philippines, for other countries. And IATF, I, I, I painted a general's hat with a stethoscope. 
And then up there, you can see a lizard. But okay, we can guess who it is. And there was a, when it, every, everybody was refrained from uh, doing social you know, um, events, there's this PMP party, Voltes 5 PMP party that they did. And then swimming with the dolphins, yes, maybe you've heard of that. And China actually took advantage of the pandemic to expand their territories in our oceans. And then the greedy um, kawawang buaya, they've always been used as uh, symbols for greedy politicians and leaders. This one, I made, I gave it a top hat and the teeth are actually gold and the claws are also gold. And of course, the effect, many of our Kababayans uh, were, were starving. Even in a, in a very corrupt environment, Many people are starving. Of course, there were unnecessary deaths during at that time. Remember the guy who was shot because he was he thought they were he was pulling out something from his bag, but it, it, he wasn't actually, actually going for any weapon at all. And this is during the lockdown. Here's another political piece, very recent, 2023, and uh, this piece was inspired from these words. Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. This is by George Orwell. And this is about histor historical revisionism. And if you notice, Jose Rizal is holding the, the bolo and Andres Bonifacio is, is the one who's holding the book. Okay. And for color combination, I use mostly red and green, but it's a different kind of red and green because if I use the saturated red and greens, this would look very Christmassy, diba? Right? So I use muted greens, but still, if you look look at the scarf, it's still red, and the barong is actually green. And using my style, I was able to see the green shirt has a red shadow have red undertones. It's it's that's very difficult to do if you do it a la prima or wet on wet technique. You just get muddy colors. But with the uh, verdasho, the overlaying of colors, you can do this technique quite easily. Okay. This was also a show uh, back in 2022, Morbus. So symbols are colors. Uh, are colors are also symbols. So over here you have a red and green color of cockroaches climbing over the face of uh of uh, well, whoever whoever and there are a lot more cockroaches uh this is called installation work okay this one is also an installation work i sourced out a very very old hospital bed or probably older than all of you and this is the there's an also an emergency lab that they converted into electric it was gas powered before and they use medical packaging and use the I picked out the red colors and the blue, yellows, and white and made them stand out in the sculpture that I made. And this the title is Termination, so it's a combination of terminal nation. And the message really is about why are there so many ways to treat illnesses in humans? But for the illnesses of the society, it's so difficult to cure. So that's basically just a message. This was also presented uh, in the NCCA. Okay. Okay. This is the last slide already. Second to the last slide. I am just plugging this in. I will have a very political art exhibition. And it will be, this is my fifth solo art exhibition. It will be also at the NCCA in Intramuros, Manila. It will happen in the 6th of July, 2024. If you're anywhere near Manila, Intramuros, during that week, do come by. The picture are examples of my underpainting works, of the works that I will be exhibiting. These works will have more color than what you see because, again, as I mentioned, it's a process. Salamat po. Pakikinig. Thank you so much. Sir Paul. Okay, so before we continue, pahinga po muna kayo. Ito nga, ito muna ko. <laughs> ito po muna kayo ng tubig. Okay, so speaker break muna tayo. 
uh, pwede po nating ilabas yung mga next session po natin, Miss Noel. So for next week, we will have What's Your Catalyst? Uncovering Inspiration for Creative Expression. Our speaker will be Mr. Doel, the ex Salvador Mercado. And I do hope, we hope, here in TLRC, that you will be able to join us again for another Heart Talk next week. And um, going back, thank you so much for that, Noel. On March 13, 2024, po tayo. Make sure that you register uh, before that date. Okay. Next next week pala. Okay, March 13. So, wala pa po tayong March 7. Okay, so next next week, March 13. So, meron po tayong... Uh, meron po tayong isang week na pahinga. Okay, going back. So, if you have any questions, um, you may... Put them in our chat box or most um, appropriately in our Q&A box. Uh, you can find the Q&A box at the lower portion of our Zoom um, interface. Okay. Okay. Sir Paul, ready na po ba kayo? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Sige, sige. <laughs> Dito. Pero na tayong isang oh. question. Okay. And Ready ready to be answered live. Okay. Okay. Good day po, Sir Paul. May I ask if you have experienced a diminishment in your enthusiasm for creating art? If so, how do you manage po to overcome such feelings? So, hmm. I think this is more of when you have lack of motivation or enthusiasm hmm. in doing your art. How do you deal with it? Hmm. Yung... Inspiration to paint kasi sa akin. Um, there are times, syempre, na yung downtime na you're not doing too much art because you, siguro sa iba, they may mental block rin naman yan, like writing. But me kasi, I, I read a lot. So anything that I read, I can translate that to to an artwork kasi nga I, I have a vast parang malawak yung yung themes that I, I go into hindi lang siya purely kunyari dati when I was starting it was just rice kasi it was so easy to do that but of course it doesn't stop there I still do that but not as often as before and today yung inspiration comes in many forms kasi it can be come from conversation things that you see on TV on on your mobile phone when you're scrolling so it's ang ano kasi niyan you really have to just ano eh, this is all for me kasi it's already my profession eh. so and they say that there's no retirement in in being an artist kumbaga you have to find ways talk to people meet people read you know find inspiration from anything you see actually from anything you see in your everyday lives i find that most artists are very observant very very observant in fact for me sometimes kunyarin nagko-commute ako and then i see a person and has a very interesting face then i focus nagha-hyper focus ako do sa mukha yan mo yon it's called staring okay yeah. diba pero hindi siya a lot as well yeah <laughs> Nakikita mo kasi lahat yung, kuyari, if you want, yung, yung lahat ng elemento doon sa, do sa tao, tinitingnan mo, yung damit niya, yung folds ng cloth, yung yung difference ng skeletal structure, ng facial structure niya. Nang, it happens to me. Siguro, that's what you can, you can do. You become, you have to be more observant. Okay. So, another question rin po. 
Um, can colors be employed strategically to elicit specific emotions in individuals? And uh, aside from that, how do you handle criticisms or negative feedback, especially for your masterpieces? Po? Yung uh, sa emotions, yes. Uh, uh, there have been studies there na you can elicit specific emotions from people. And may mga scientific studies that if you put you in a red room, mas agitated ka rather than I put you in a green room you'll be very ano green is the pinaka relaxing color of them all eh. mm. so so you'll be more relaxed in the green room so if you want to to make artworks that uh showcase yung ano yung kung galit ka ganyan, mm. you can use there red, will be diba? more reds oh yeah more reds there ganun so it it can be done it can be done okay and then the other question was yung mga negative na uh, how comment. do you handle like negative comments mm, na, or negative natatawa lang ako <laughs> <laughs> honestly kasi you cannot please everybody true that's not, that's not possible even sabihin mo na uh, they yung negative na messages nila I, i've had that nung lumabas yung ano yung sim akala nila Vincent Van Gogh work oh. I had a lot of negative feedback from that manggagaya ka hindi ka original hindi mo kaya gumawa ng sarili mo yung tayo mga Pilipino mga kop- kopyador mga manggagaya pero but they, they did not uh, know the back story why I painted that and yeah. in fact Vincent Van Gogh was my original influence in making art mm. some of I did not share a lot of my Vincent Van Gogh style work here mm. uh, but it was the first many years of my painting was uh ano kumbaga puro ganyang style ang ginagawa even today I still do it because I still love to do it so nakikita ko yun dun sa ano studio oh mo so even yung yung painting na nilabas ko ng yung ginhawa sa gitna ng pandemya mm. ang dami rin negative feedback especially mm. if you're coming from the other side of the political sphere o oh, galit na galit rin sila sa akin ganyan so but sa akin naman it's my expression eh. so hindi ko masyado sila matatawa ka hindi i don't take it ano uh, personally kasi mm-hmm. it's my work sometimes i pang ano lang pang gulo lang i do comment back yan para para lang may ano may counting interaction Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, going back to what uh, Kuya Nico Sedekol also said that um, art has a lot of uh, how do you call this? Art has a lot of effect on the affect of different individuals. So, pwede mong gamitin yung art for awareness. Pwede mong gamitin, gamitin yung art to push for changes. Kaya talaga makikita rin natin na hindi naman talaga lahat ng art magiging parang in sync or in parallel with the different principles of people, iba't ibang tao, iba't ibang gusto. Kaya, yun, if you are an artist, follow what uh, Sir Paul said, that you cannot please everyone, it's okay, as long as you were able to express what you wanted to express. And no need to be very personal when it comes to the negative feedbacks. You can laugh it off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next po, uh, meron po tayong bagong question. Hmm. Uh, I'd like to ask and push on this question more on the condition of using art as a tool for social information and social awareness. From an artist's perspective, have you been through a tough time suppressing your art because of political affiliation? And as an artist, how do you see the new age of art in today's situation, especially with the emer- emerging generative um, technologies like AI? AI, okay. Hmm. Uh, many artists have come before me using art for as a social as a tool for social information. Yung mga social realists, they do that. Matagal na. Mm-hmm. Some of the best artists in the Philippines actually are social realists, in my opinion, kasi they were in times of extreme pressure, lalo na yung panahon ng martial law years. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Very suppressing actually siya. And in, in my case naman, uh, I did experience that during uh, the previous na, na administration. Well, in fact, I, I can share it na 
they were background checking me already. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and I also had a political satire comics page that I was doing before. It was just for fun, really. Just, uh, pero it's very satirical na, na comics that I did. Field comics, if you want to look. Pero medyo dormant na siya ngayon. So, ayun. The, the rest of the question was, ano? Ano po? Um, regarding po on today's situation Ayun as an artist. I use oh. AI, Ayun, but for fun only. Kung baga, mm -hmm. pa, for me, it's just a tool. Uh, it won't replicate. I've tried it. I have an account with Midjourney. It's more for fun for me. Kung baga, dapat magaling kang prompt engineer. Mm -hmm. mag mapalabas mo yung gusto mo palabasin. Ah, hirap na hirap ako. Even if I think I well versed naman ako how to explain, but you have yung photographic terms, dapat alam mo yun. Tapos mm -hmm. yung composition niya, how you you place people will be very very difficult if you don't do and uh, go training for AI para mapalabas. It's not exact eh. Kasi ang nangyayari sa AI, they pull uh, resources from the internet, from different images. Mm -hmm. And and they come up with something new. Well, in fact, it's actually uh, derivative from different images across the web. Mm -hmm. You can get it artists because sometimes the result is very, very similar to what they've done. Mm -hmm. Because so, it's it's been trained to look at the different mm -hmm. arts coming from different artists all over the yeah. world that has been training. Yon, that sa akin ng AI, I'm not too worried about it. Iba parin kasi yung handmade, ah, and, the yeah. digitally made. And for now, I think yung, yung, yung art that you made with your hands will be still hold more value than the ones that were made digitally. Hindi ba pa yung digital art? Ha? Yung artificial intelligence what is what I'm talking about. Kasi uh -huh. if you look at history talaga, what is the most expensive thing, singular thing, most expensive thing in this world? Di ba art? Yung mm. kay, yung Salvador Mundi ni Leonardo da Vinci mm. was sold for about 450 million US dollars. The more expensive item than that were actually mga yachts. Oh. Luxury yachts, a billion dollars. But the uh, luxury yacht, it's made of many components. Very many expensive components. Eh yung kay yung Salvador Mundi was paint, Isa lang. <laughs> cloth, and wood. Oh. Very singular, very... very so, it's the most expensive thing. Then why? Why is that? Bakit nangyayari yun, di ba? Sabi nga sa akin ni, ano, mm. um, yung isang mentor ko sa Cebu, that the more the art is, uh, has nothing, no function at all, the more it becomes expensive. <laughs> mm. uh, pero, yun nga rin. Okay. Down to down, next question po tayo, Sir Paul. Okay lang po ba? Okay lang, okay lang. How do you navigate the challenges of balancing artistic pursuits with financial stability? Ito na, na pag usapan natin yeah. to one of this one time okay. dun sa studio. Ah, okay. Kasi, para sa, sa akin, oh, sarili kong opinion to, ah, there, are, there are two spheres sa art, art world. Yung commercial na sphere, that's artists that make artworks that yung highly sellable. Kumbaga, very colorful and um, kumbaga masarap tingnan tapos highly decorative. Tapos meron namang artists that are in the critical sphere nung art ano, practice nila. So, you have to, if you're, meron kasi mga artists that stay in the commercial sphere na what they do is the same work over and over again not uh, going to other subjects or themes, not heavy themes, hindi sila gagawa. Tapos meron naman, nandun lang sa critical. Now, if you merge two spheres together, there's a junction there in between. Commercially successful and critically successful. Commercially validated and critically validated. Now, how do you get to that point? Diba? Now, Yun yung, yun yung rin hinahanap ng karamihan. Okay. Ngayon, doon sa commercial sphere, kasi mas malaki yun, it's, it's bigger. Not only in the Philippines, even outside the country talaga, even other countries, mas malaki talaga yun. There are more people who will buy art if you do that. Mm -hmm. Now, for the critical ones, there are less collectors, less uh, mga enthusiasts, 
but they're there. You know, you have to find that that balance on how that you intersection or, or you just stay because there are people who who are mayaman na sila. They can stay critical. Wala silang pakialam. I don't have mm. oh worry about getting money because I have my other sources, iba. Mm. Yung commercial naman, they're happy. And sabi nga ng isang sikat na na pintor that the quality of an artist's work is a re- is a reflection of the artist's mind. So depende rin kasi iba tayo eh, di ba? Yung ibang tao, gusto, happy na ako dito lang. Hindi ko na kailangan umalis dyan. Kumikita naman ako, ganyan. So, yun sa akin kasi, I, I, na, ang nangyari sa akin, parang since I focus in yung sa rice before, mm-hmm. that's highly commercial, okay? Yung, yung, kung tutuusin. Pero sa akin kasi, I did not make those paintings to sell them. Uh-huh. I made them because I was inspired to make them. And my history, my background dictates that I make them. So, sabi nga ng isang curator na if you're looking for a very um, yung yung makabuluhan na rice painting, you get one for me kasi it was not purely made. Actually, I made just for selling. Okay? Mm. There's a reason why I did it. And in fact, I still do it and it's a very ironical reason. We paint rice fields because they're beautiful, bountiful, harvest, good feeling. But the background is the farmers are poor. Oh. They're working hard. They're it's, starting... it's an ironic It's background. an ironic painting. But very ironic. And I like that. Okay? It's, it's so classic. romantic. I, I can oh, still remember you how they... romanticize it. But oh. it's true. It's hard to find rice farmers. Oh. Like, so, I, I can still remember I the Amorsolo things, right? Like, mm, during yeah, the very time. Very romanticized. Yes, yes. Very romanticized mm, the uh, life of the farmers. Mm. When in fact, our farmers are actually like suffering yeah. a lot. So I try to balance that by doing both. I do critical work and I do, you can say, more commercial work. Yeah, mm-hmm. depende na lang talaga dun sa mga ano. That's how yung stability sa ano sa siguro sa artist. That's where you can find it. But there are many ways. There are many ways. Okay. I saw also other artists that I know of that to keep on their branding, they continue mm-hmm. to do a type of art that is commercially uh, commercially like uh, good for them. But then they also do self projects, which they do not necessarily post for their viewers to see, uh, which would like make them feel good about themselves or put out in a more critically um available exhibit. So padering ganon actually, yun nang sinasabi ng ibang mga artist friends ko. Now, well, do do what you do, do hmm. what you think is best for you, and iba iba talaga yung feeling pag I know, professional artist at doing art ka lang on the go. Wala kang ibang pinagkakakitaan. Kasi kailangan mo talagang i-balance lahat yan. Okay. So, do we have any more questions? May mga okay, may mga messages po tayo. Thank you po, Sir Hilario. Sir Paul Hilario for your sharing. It helped me appreciate art more and see possible meaning in it. A very good way of expressing human thoughts and feelings. Your art is very relevant, makabayan, and shows a touch of our culture ang husay po. That's one of our um audience appreciating your work, Sir Paul. And I and I deeply appreciate your work. Also because I see you as my mentor, even if I am <laughs> <laughs> And I, I also appreciate the the fact that you were talking about colors and even pointing them out because you know how I see color. Mm. And Oh, and <laughs> and then you were pointing it out like these are your greens and these are your reds and then for me to be able to see those uh para para mo akong pina facilitate mm-hmm. uh on seeing how your work look like uh, okay so i think ayun <laughs> pumasok po yung question ng how about color blind po <laughs> Nasaan? Ikaw ba nagtanong noon? Ayan ang anonymous, uh, anonymous participant. Isn't that colors convey message and emotion, red for anger, yellow for positivity? But what about colorblind individuals po? How do they interpret colors when they struggle to distinguish between certain hues? So what do you think about this? So, I think like, si Malaka ay makakasagot, hindi ako. I cannot relate. <laughs> yeah. Um. Fortunately, you have a colorblind person here who does art <laughs> and sir paul hilario is my mentor even if he says he isn't <laughs> and um 
I perceive color differently. Actually, Sir Paul was the one who taught me that use the color that you see, whatever color that becomes. Because it's more of how you see your own world rather than how people would see the world that you created in front of them. Um, yun ang pinaka tumatak sa ulo ko na I don't have to really um, put out there the standard of what people see. Kasi iba yung nakikita ko. Iba, uh, things are always so happy looking for me because I look at the world differently from what other people see. And the way I create art is, sabi nga nung iba, if gumawa ako ng art, ba, napaka-dark. Ganun. Pero sa akin, napaka-ganda ng feeling nun. It's like a different world. And I make art the way I see the colors. And I don't necessarily have to follow the colors that everyone sees or affects them. Because in the end, po naman, art is art for art's sake. So, if you wanted to express art the way you wanted to express it, then see it the way you wanted to see it. It's not the way people would want to see it. Okay, so, gaya po nung sinabi ni Sir Paul, his works, especially the narrative ones, may mean differently to you and may mean differently to him. So, it's upon you how you would uh, eventually um, interpret whatever is being brought onto the table. So, ganun po. <laughs> so, hopefully, may naka-answer rin po yun sa question na yun. Meron po ta- <laughs> talaga nag ask may nag-ask talaga regarding the colorblind. Ang napaka ano po kasi ng kulay, napaka um, importante na part in making visual arts yung kulay. At saka a lot of people are still also uh, struggling on how to use color, especially if they are, you know, young artists, developing artists. And even ako, Meron talaga akong um, unusual na parang insecurities when it comes to color but we can we can move past through that. Thank you po so much. Uh, galing po ito sa isa sa ating mga audience. Thank you so much Mr. Paul Hilario for your remarkable artworks and elo- eloquently conveyed profound messages encouraging critical thinking and inspiring our nation. Your artistic endeavors serve as a beacon of inspiration, motivating individuals to pursue po their creative passions uninhibited by external judgment. I extend then po my gratitude to the UP Cebu TLRC for organizing this enlightening work. Napakaganda po ng ating session today and that is, of course... Thank you to our uh, speaker, Mr. Paul Hilario. Napaka-eloquent and napaka-clear po ng kanyang ginawa discussion. Okay. So, yes, for... Let's have our um, brief synthesis and then certificate giving. And Ms. Noel, kindly prepare for the certificate. Again, with the work of... Mr. Hilario, he was able to convey to us what colors mean to him in his early inspirations of making art and throughout the years that he has been making art, doing narrative uh, works, both um, targeting social and political issues, as well as the interchanging issues of what good life is and what lies beneath it. A very good example of that would be his works that looks at rice and the beauty of farming, but then also the hidden issue of uh, the farmers being in a uh, lower position or in a bad position of suffering throughout because of the system, the government system of not not performing and um, supporting well uh, rice farmers. Also with all of his um, political and social works that includes narratives, um, also, his insights on how art uh, can be how art can be a vehicle for expression using the colors as well as the different um, elements that compose the visual art material. Uh, Sir Paul Hilario will also have his um, solo exhibit soon enough in July. Yes, Sir Paul. And hopefully you can also come over there to see this, these uh, works of social narratives that talks about our nation and the global perspectives. 
Okay, so thank you so much, Noel and Sir Nan Bernardes. Maybe we can call them up for the certificate giving. Yes. Sir Nan. Yep. Yep. Hi, good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much for uh, Sir Paul for sharing your expertise in the world of art. And we um viewers here, especially here in UP Cebu, would also would like to see you in person, sir, if you have time to come visit us here. <laughs> Don't worry, Jara also will be here if you're here as well. <laughs> okay, so this certificate of appreciation is proudly given to Mr. Paul Hilario for sharing his invaluable time and expertise as a resource speaker in the webinar on love politics and the color wheel on February 28, 2024 via Zoom given this day, February 28, 2024 at UPC Cebu City 6000, signed by yours truly. And again, Sir Paul, thank you so much. And also would like to thank you for all the participants. That's what I see here. We have 59 participants on board. So hopefully you had fun and hopefully um, you will also um, check our next webinar series here in yes. Dallas. That will be on March 13 with Mr. Doel Salvador Mercado. Okay, before anything else, everyone, kindly, if you can, kindly open your camera. Can we turn off the YouTube? Uh, YouTube.